Thanks, everyone. Um, Charlie's right. We did um, use that summoning spell from um, Harry Potter to name our company because we thought that this was kind of just like magic. And so maybe you guys can share some of that magic here this morning. Um, this talk's called A New Direction in Wind Energy. Our, we, our big idea is to do nothing short of creating a new way to harvest wind energy. So that's our big idea. This is a conference about big idea. What's our big idea? There's got to be another way to do this. And we have a lot of history going to tell us that there isn't, but that's our idea. And the next question is, why does it matter? So here's why we think it matters. Because the world's confronted with a real big question. How do we provide um, more electricity to a bigger and bigger population and improve the standard of living for impoverished people around the world, while at the same time preventing our uh, planet from going off the cliff? A little complicated chart here is basically showing you that in order to uh, get off our current path of massive greenhouse gas increases and just avoid doubling our CO2, up to two trillion watts of new wind energy is needed. That's really a lot. That's a million two megawatt turbines of the sort that you see in wind farms today. You'd have to put up 50,000 of those a year because they only have about a 20 year life. So you have to actually build two million of them <laughs> to get there. Um, and it's 100 times the amount of wind energy installed in the world today, which is really a lot more than we have right now. We've got 29 gigawatts. It's been installed over the last 20 years. This is 1,000 times that much or 100 times that much. And for startup companies like ours, this is interesting. And there's also a huge economic opportunity here. And that's why we're talking about that in Detroit, where we need some new economic opportunities. So I mentioned 100 times more than we have today. Well. There's a lot of people who are worried about noise. People don't like this idea. <laughs> there's safety concerns. Um, there's environmental concerns around bird kill and, and endangered species, migratory birds. There's also a transmission problem. Most of the places where we generate a lot of wind energy today are places like this, where it's not a problem with that house because the population in these areas are typically about three bison per square mile, right? <laughs> but, all the users are 1,000 miles away in St. Louis, in Chicago, in Minneapolis. We have to have up to 30,000 miles more transmission in this country in order to bring that to energy to the users. There's only been 800 miles built in the last 20 years. So this problem is almost as big as that million wind turbine problem that I was talking about. So here's a question for you. What if we got rid of those spinning blades? That's our big idea. Let's make a wind turbine that doesn't have any spinning blades. So that sounds hard, but for those of us who are big fans of Dyson vacuum cleaners, I would be among them. <laughs> All the women in the audience are probably happy here. Get rid of those bags and don't have to worry about whether you bought bags. You may know that the Dyson company just brought out a fan without any blades. So, so it can be done, right? Um, but we have our mental model about a thousand years of wind energy development um, basically is devoted to making things that go around in circles. The, the entire, all eight billion of us basically look at wind energy as something that comes doing this. It may go around on a vertical axis or it may be going around on a horizontal axis, but these are the mental models we've been working with. Here's a giant wind turbine somebody produced back in 1899 out of wood, sort of the spruce goose of wind turbines. Um, <laughs> so even in our electrical generation, it's always been this idea that it's going to go around and around. And actually, that's really true of electrical generation as well. In electricity, we've also got a mental model that says, basically, almost all of our power is made by turning a big magnet around inside a big copper winding. It doesn't really matter if I'm working with a hydro plant, a coal plant, a gas plant, a nuke, doesn't matter. All these guys are making steam to turn a turbine to make a magnet go around and around. So we don't have a lot of mental models for either wind energy or really for electricity transmission that differ from this. Now, solar panels don't do that, right? That turned that paradigm on its head. And if you had told somebody in 1950 that you were going to make a flat panel that you know, produce electricity directly from the wind instead of heating water, they would have laughed at you too. So, but the great thing about these is they're stationary. They don't go anywhere. They're silent. And what's really, really important about this is they're modular. I can build solar panels in a series of sizes. 
I can sell those panels and you can put them on your roof, a handful of them, or you can go out and you can buy literally thousands and thousands of them and you can build a multi-megawatt solar farm out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, for example. So what if wind energy was also station, silent, and modular? What if you could build a set of panels and you could install them individually? Or you could install them in multiples and you could make five rows of these things going up vertically as well. What if you could produce those wind panels in just a handful of sizes and somebody could buy thousands and thousands of them like you do with solar panels today? It would change the way that we think about wind turbines. It would change the way we site them. 25% of all wind farms that are proposed today can't get built because of siting objections. Um, because they make noise or they're a problem for some kind of environmental or they're sensitive landscapes. We can change that. So how does that work? Well, this is just a super simple explanation since I don't have time to go into detail. But basically, opposing electrical charges, just like magnets, are attracted to each other. It takes energy to pull those charges apart. Just like if I had a big magnet up here, which I meant to bring along and I forgot it, <laughs> I'd be able to show you that. So that energy in this process, it's, um, electrokinetic wind energy technology. That energy is provided by the wind and we convert it directly to electricity in the same way that a solar panel takes sunlight and converts that directly to a current. It's very much like what happens inside a thunderstorm, actually. How are we going to make this? And this is the other piece about why this is important, why we're talking about this here in Detroit, because the manufacturing story here is as important as the energy generation story. And it's really important because of all the resources that we have in this area that are underutilized, those 400,000 manufacturing jobs that have gone away in the last few years, why we can make this the place to create a new kind of clean energy and restore our economy. We start with an engineered tube, an engineered tube that disperses those charges that we talked about. And that tube is fabricated into panels. And then those panels are assembled. And out of them, you can create something of custom size and capacity. If you want to, you can even mass customize this and make this tube at varying lengths and, and make this thing heart-shaped. Or make it in a circle and paint the back of it red and white and stick it in the target parking lot. So this, this kind of thing can be customized and yet inexpensive. It can be modular and applied in many, many different ways in the same way that you do a solar panel. Why do we want to do it here? Well, think about some numbers here. One kilowatt of silent wind using this technology will use roughly 640 inches of tube, something like that. So one megawatt is going to use 640,000 inches. That's about 12 miles. Doesn't sound too unmanageable. One gigawatt's 12,000 miles. Here's Venus de Milo. She's 2,400 miles away in, in uh, the Louvre. You get there and back about five times with that much tubing, right? If I want one terawatt, that's 12,000 miles. If I want two terawatts, it's 24 or 20, 12 million miles. If I want two terawatts, it's 24 million miles. That's there at Venus, the planet, and back, right? <laughs> so that's a lot of tubing. <laughs> A lot. It's unimaginably a lot of tubing in a lot of ways. But with the existing manufacturing capability we have here in Michigan, I can probably make that tube for a penny a foot. And now it starts to sound like not so unimaginably much or so unimaginably expensive. Furthermore, if we make that tube at 300 feet a minute, do you remember how I said that we'd have to make a million turbines? You'd have to make 40,000 of them a year. That's 100 times the capacity. Well. So it's, when you think about the fact that the biggest turbine blade manufacturing plant in the world today makes about eight or 10,000 blades a year, this is a, it's a scale problem because you've got to lay all those things up by hand on a tool. But with tubing, you can literally make it at 300 feet per minute. This is the iconic Rouge Ford's Rouge plant. Now Ford's Rouge plant's not particularly underutilized, but think about all the vehicles that have come out of here and think about the fact that if I had 50 machines, which wouldn't take up even one half of 1% of that plant, <laughs> I can make all that tubing in seven years. You can kind of look at this as being the Model T of wind energy. We can apply automotive mass production manufacturing ideas to creating non-turbine wind energy and do it using the technology we have here in our place at low cost and move this thing forward at a rate that allows us to contemplate having the kind of wind resources that we need in order to address climate change concerns. So, our other big idea is to create a new wind energy economy that starts here in Detroit. 
open up that closed plant, put all these people back to work, because this is the kind of work that everybody here knows how to do. We had the best engineers, the best workers, the best planners and financers in the world are here able to do this. And at the same time, we can do something that really makes a difference in addressing climate change while restoring economic vitality in our neighborhood.